What's up everybody? Welcome to Ride Review. Today we are checking out the Bellatrix Summit 1. This is an electric adventure bike, you know, next door to an electric mountain bike. At Bellatrix, uh, right, you know, right now it's branded as an electric mountain bike, you know, all purpose electric mountain bike for everyone. Um, but I've heard they're actually gonna kind of reposition it a little bit as more of just kind of a all-purpose adventure bike, which is where it really shines. You know, the people that own these have been using them for, you know, kind of a little bit of everything. You can ride some mountain bike trails, you can ride regular trails, just go off-road exploring, but you can also ride it around town if you want to. You know, there's people that have put a rack and fenders on the back there so that you can haul some cargo, have a little bit of protection if you are riding in the weather. But of course, you know, it is going to really shine on the trails. You've got these nice, great grip, knobby tires on here, a nice suspension fork up here, 120 millimeters of travel on here, hydraulic fork with lockout. So this thing is pretty awesome. You can see we've uh, we've beaten it up a little bit. We've really put this thing through the ringer. I mean, we took it on some trail rides. We pitted it against some other ma mountain bikes in our EMTB showdown, which you can check out in the video description below. Anyways, uh, so the, the reason I say that this is kind of, you know, right next door to a mountain bike is that it's got a few things on it that can deny it access to some mountain bike trails. Uh, and there's also like a few niceties that you would really like to have on a mountain bike that are missing here. So let's so let's through let's run through some of this stuff. We're going to talk about the electronics first. 750 watt rear hub motor. This thing is powerful. I mean, this thing can get you up to 28 miles per hour, no problem. Gives it good hill climbing capabilities. But a motor that that powerful, uh, you can't use it on all mountain bike trails. There's a lot of them that will limit the motor power to you know only 250 watts. This one's a little bit big for that. Uh, some trails also don't allow you to have a throttle, which we do. There you go. Now, don't get me wrong, throttles are awesome. I <laughs> love having it, especially you know if you're getting tired at the end of your riding day, but it can uh, limit some of your access. And another thing to note about the hub motor back here, so the, the pros for the hub motors back here, very durable, very long lasting, great for higher speeds, but they don't give you the climbing abilities that you would get with a mid-drive motor. A mid-drive motor that sits up here in the middle of the bottom bracket takes advantage of the pedaling drivetrain so that you can get a huge advantage if you are, you know, in first gear. Then the motor gets an advantage and it a 250 watt motor can feel way more powerful. But the downside of having a motor like that is it's a lot of wear and tear on your pedaling drivetrain. You know, chews it up, tears up the chain, messes up your <laughs> rear cassette after a while. You have to replace those components more often. Don't have to worry about that with the hub motor. And of course, mid drives are a lot more expensive. I mean, one of the most compelling things for the Summit 1 here is that you can get a, you know, EMTB trail capable bike for under $2,000. That's a hard thing to do, especially when you've got pretty solid components on here. The battery mounted in the down tube right here nice high capacity ul certified velatrix really good about this they ul certify the batteries and then there's a separate ul certification for the entire system that they also have they get their frames certified for their load bearing ratings so they really go above and beyond with just the, the safety the build quality etc if you do get this and do plan to do some serious mountain biking really the only thing there's only two things that i would change here to really get it uh, you know to that level one is i'd get a bigger cassette back here with a bigger first gear for climbing because uh, the one back here is you know if you're going up really steep inclines you're going to be relying on the motor a lot you know using the throttle uh, to compensate for the you know not so great climbing gear that's a pretty cheap upgrade to make the other thing i would do is to get a dropper seat post in here so if you've never seen one of those before then it's essentially an adjustable seat post you have a lever on the handlebar that you can press down and then sit on the seat it'll lower it all the way down and if you stand up and hit, hit the lever again whoop it'll raise the seat back up that's so that you can dynamically adjust your seat height because when you're mountain biking when you're pedaling uphill you want the seat up high so you can extend your legs get nice pedaling efficiency but then when you're on the downhill you want the seat lowered like this because then you have a lot of room to maneuver in the cockpit if you can't adjust it up and down on the fly then you end up just leaving it really low like this and then your pedaling efficiency isn't as great so you know if you did those two upgrades then boom it becomes even more capable on mountain bike trails as long as you are allowed to access them given how powerful this bike is run through the rest of the components on here so we, we mentioned the cassette back here in the back shimano altus here which is a step up from shimano's lowest quality you know starts at tourney altus is the next one up this is a decent um, derailleur back here it does you know stick out a little bit you can see this one's pretty scratched up uh, from some wipeouts that we've taken but you know, it's holding up fine it hasn't <laughs> hasn't affected 
did it so far. They got the slap guard on here to protect the frame from the chain. And then this nice sort of a like chain guide right up here. It doesn't do a whole lot to like protect your pant legs or anything from getting into it, but it is going to keep the chain actually on there and not flying off. And for stopping power, hydraulic disc brakes. Hydraulic brakes are a lot easier to actually, you know, squeeze and actuate the levers. You've got 180 millimeter rotors on the front and in the rear here. So these provide nice stopping power. But if you're doing a, a really long downhill, especially like a really hard technical, you know, mountain bike downhill, uh, you know, the brakes might start to get a little bit toasty. When we did our Lower East State Park trail ride, which the video for that's linked below, uh, the brakes on this one did actually start overheating, so we had to take a little bit of a break for that. But, you know, that was, we were really pushing it to the limit, so I think for most scenarios, they're gonna be more than enough. Now, the Summit One does come equipped with uh, a kickstand and lights as well. So you have a headlight, which, <laughs> need to adjust these cables a little bit here so we can actually see that one. You get a nice bright headlight and you even get a tail light which is mounted underneath the saddle right here and this has brake light activation on it for when you squeeze those brake levers. Actually really nice um, if somebody's following you down a trail because they can see uh, you know when you're braking, when you're slowing down. Uh, so that's another thing that it makes this bike more useful having those things. A lot of true mountain bikes when you buy them they don't have lights they don't have kickstands the idea is that you want to you know reduce weight and reduce components that can get damaged if you crash which happens a lot when you do mountain biking so you know this one having them makes it a little bit more all-purpose a little bit more utility to it and this will just kind of run through the cockpit reel here you know nice uh, nice wide handlebars on here feels awesome love the grips they're locking and they have just nice like this texture on them it feels really good to grip you got your thumb throttle over here on the left trigger shivers trigger shifters on the right and then if you want to use the display it's mounted right here in the center you do want to you know the display can get damaged if you take too much of a, you know, a gnarly wipeout and the bike goes end over end just from the way it sticks out here so that is one thing to to be cautious of um, you know on a lot of um, you know, I guess I would say dedicated mountain bikes, you'll see a display that's like, you know, mounted kind of down here where it's out of the way, or even sometimes like in the top tube right here. So, you know, be careful, try not to get in too, <laughs> too crazy of a crash. I'm gonna fire up the display real quick here, hold down the power button. Okay, now with the display fired on here, uh, it's uh, in, in grayscale, you know, it, it is a, like a color display, we've just got it in, in grayscale right now. It's pretty easy to see in daylight. If you're in direct sunlight, it can be maybe a little bit difficult, but it's you know, reasonably bright here and it stands out pretty well. You can see your assist level down here, speedometer. You got a nice precise battery percentage readout here. Now something the Velotric bikes do is you have you have your different assist levels right you can hit the plus on here to go all the way up to five for that but then there's this secondary sort of power setting you can see it says boost right there if we short press the power button we can change that to eco trail or boost so you know within each of those you still have your one through five but that's you know if you set it down to eco it's going to feel about like a 350 watt motor if you set it to trail it feels about comparable to a 500 and when you're in boost it's like you have the full 750 watts a lot more peppy a lot more fun now these displays uh, have a lot of stuff that you can configure with them they're also compatible with velatrix app so in the app you can you know fine-tune your ride modes change settings you can update the firmware for the bike without having to take it into a shop which is definitely my favorite feature to really see a deep dive into the app watch our review of the velatrix discover 2 which is uh, using the exact same system but if you want to see the basics on here for customizing the display you hold down plus and minus you can reset your data come in here and change the writing mode which you know, it's easier to do just with the power button uh, so let's see let's go back adjust the speed limit of the bike you know some of the kind of brightness settings for the display whether or not the throttle is active so you know if you're riding on a trail that doesn't allow throttles you could disable it in here so you're complying with the rules you can customize the rear light modes as well um, so like, you know, steady on, braking enhance, et cetera. It has a few different modes that you can use for it. Uh, what else do we have in here? Change your units, pairing with the app, of course, and then Find My. So this is a nice touch that Velatrix started putting on their bikes is that if you can use it with the Apple Find My network, you know, if you have an iPhone, link this up in there and then you can track the bike. So if it were to get stolen, you have something that you can do to, you know, recover it and it says it on the bike as well too so i'm hoping that this is something that can you know, maybe deter would-be thieves if they know hey those bikes are easily tracked okay let's come back out here 
that's uh you know that about covers it for you know the basics of the display i find that they work really nicely easy to use uh, i think they've done a good job there uh, i don't think we talked about the the pedal assist so i do want to just mention it before we get into the ride test and that is that it is a torque sensor if you're not familiar with the different pedal assist sensors that you can have on these bikes uh, a cadence sensor, which is the most basic one, is just going to measure revolutions of the pedal, and it's not really dynamic. Like, if you're pedaling, assist is on, if you stop pedaling, it stops, they have a delay to them. Not, not very responsive. A torque sensor, by contrast, measures the pressure that you're putting onto the pedals. So you pedal a little bit, get a little bit of help. Pedal a lot, you get a lot of help. It feels way more engaging, more of like a, a traditional bicycling experience. So I uh, you know, love that they have it on here, especially for uh, you know, a more like trail adventure mountain bike. Torque sensor makes a lot of sense. What's up everybody? Tyson here from Ride Review. I want to take a quick moment to tell you about Micromobility America. This is a micromobility focused conference that is happening in Southern California on November 14th and 15th this year. Now we are pulling out all the stops and trying to get a lot more dealers and uh, you know if you're, if you're a store owner or uh, maybe a distributor for electric vehicles, I mean you know bikes, scooters, skateboards, EUCs, uh, you know micro cars, anything like that. We want to get you involved at this event. We're going to have representatives from hundreds of manufacturers there. Most of these representatives are going to be, you know, C-level, founders, engineers. So if there's brands that you're interested in, you can, you know, skip the email chains and just go, you know, straight to the people who actually make the decisions and can really tell you what these products are about and why they made them this way. Also at this event, you can expect, you know, we're going to have networking mixers, we're going to have after parties, we're going to have the dealer awards, we're going to have a Shark Tank style competition where manufacturers can bring in some of their, you know, new and outlandish product ideas and then the dealers will get a chance to you know vet those and rank those you know see if they're going to be good for the market or not if you guys are interested please check out the description of the video you're going to find a link where you can learn more and get registered all right back to the video okay that is enough talking about the summit one for now we're going to hand it off to mitch for the ride test thanks tyson today we are out here test riding the Velatric Summit 1. This is a traditional mountain bike with traditional mountain bike geometry. So we're out here at a little course. We're gonna test it out and let's jump right into the agility section where we'll really, you know, we'll do some jumps, we'll do some skids, we'll do some, some mountain bike stuff. So let's get into it. All right, guys, we are out here on the Summit 1. Go ahead and turn it on. Power button is located right over here on our keypad. And hold that down until it turns on. And then right now it is in boost, so you can press this power button again. We've got different modes. We've got eco, trail, and boost in each one of our pedal assist levels, so there's 15 ways that you can ride. Uh, we're jumping right into the agility, so might as well go boost on five. Let's go ahead and give her a run, see how she performs. Now one of the things that is nice about this one compared with some of the other EMTBs is it does have a throttle, which I am quite fond of. You just kind of focus on the trail, Go. Jump down over here. Uh, two jumps coming up. Woo -hoo -hoo. That was fun. Oh yeah. No, it's a traditional hardtail. It's got a traditional hardtail feel to it. A lot of fun to ride. Skid around. A nice Shimano hydraulic brakes. Oh, missed that one, missed that one. Oh, oh that was a hole. <laughs> See, I'm kind of hitting some stuff that I haven't really seen before. That's a nice little loop. I like that. And again, that was mostly throttle. Let's hit that again. Not going too fast in that turn. And let's see how she performs. There we go. Okay. Now, one of the things that, uh, is missing here, especially if you're used to doing 
some actual mountain biking is a dropper post so I have it down in pretty much the lowest position for some of that stuff what I'll probably do is put it into a better pedal geometry here for me there we go Rides real nice in the concrete as well. See, there's a trail we can hop into over here. Are you a trail? Looks like it wants to be a trail. Let's head back here and test out some of the different power modes. So, downshift here. Let's go ahead and put it into one eco now this is going to be theoretically giving us our least amount of pedal assist that's a much different riding bike we're having a boost pop it up into three getting some assistance from the motor and because it's torque as we push harder on the pedals we're actually going to get a little bit more out of it Go ahead and do a braking test here real quick. Lots of control. Now these Shimano hydraulic brakes, I mean really, as far as like this price point goes, we really do see a lot of other brakes, some no-name stuff, Logan's, Bangle, but these Shimano brakes are really nice. Like the hand feel. Lost the trail, oh here it is. Here we go. So in eco mode, you really have to do quite a bit more of the work. Go ahead and put it into trail. Again, we're gonna hit that power button down here. Shift into a higher gear. A little hill climb here. We're gonna sway up here. Oh, we made it. All right. Got a hill we can bomb right here. Woo! Oh yeah. Missing the trail here. I mean really just throwing this thing around is uh is a blast. A lot of the other mountain bikes, especially with torque sensors, they don't have throttles. So this is just a very fun exhilarating experience. Now we're shifting through the gears. Got these Shimano rapid fire shifters here. And they work really well. Even outside the box, you don't have to adjust anything. So that's always a bonus when you're reviewing bikes, you don't gotta do any adjusting on stuff. Here's the trail again. Now, one of the things that's nice about this bike. Again, we're kind of reviewing it as a mountain bike is there's no ghost pedaling here. So even at top speeds, I'm going to go ahead and do a top speed run here in a minute. I have to take my sunglasses off because the uh, polarization, it's hard to see the bike. Hard to see the display here. Now eight gears. A little bit lower than most most of the mountain bikes. You're used to seeing, you know, nine is kind of the smallest, some tens, but it's some pretty good, pretty good ratio here. All right, so we're pedaling. We got boost. Do a top speed run here. We do have it unlocked. It is pretty easy to get to. So we're getting 29. 
31 and a brake test. That is fun. Go ahead and do another tough speed run over here. Now, one of the things that is a uh, little bit of a complaint for me is there's a little bit of a delay between switching between pedal assist and the throttle, mostly going from throttle to pedal assist. So I start pedaling and I let go of the throttle. There's probably about a one second delay before the pedal assist kicks in. And really, I would like that to be, you know, pretty, pretty seamless. If it's well balanced, I mean, riding no hands, 28 miles an hour. Lots of control, lots of fun. And again, we've got boost, trail, and eco for riding modes here. And then five levels of pedal assist. Dude, there's a trail. Saw some kids on trails. Like, let me see if I can find that. Here we go. A little trail riding over here. But when you're looking at traditional mountain bikes, having a torque sensor is pretty much the way to go. Now this is hub. If you were going to be doing some serious jumping, some serious agility work, you probably would want to go mid drive. But we've been jumping this thing all day. I mean, I took that run, that initial agility run, where I took that like six times or so already. So pretty much hitting that jump. One time I boosted a little bit too far and I landed to flat. Uh, you know, the bike's still here, still in good condition, still riding it around. So you gotta do a little jumping here and there. I'd say go for it. But, you know, it is a hardtail, it is hub. So there's some things kind of working against it as far as jumping goes. But handles real nice, got good control, even in this, some of this like loose dirt stuff. A little bit loamy in some areas. some kids over in the zone let's hit it show them what it's all about let's see where's my turn off right here should probably adjust the seat a little bit but we're rolling with it That's all right. You can skid over here. Very nice. Head back over here to the top. Woo! Man, that is. A lot of fun. Well guys, that is some of the stuff you do on the Veltric Summit 1. And uh, look, I'm no mountain bike guy, you know, but for somebody who knows what they're doing, this is a pretty cool tool for that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna send it back to Tyson with some final thoughts on the Summit 1. All righty, my friends, that is a wrap for our review of the Velatric Summit One, the all-purpose electric adventure mountain bike for everyone. Now, if you want to see more footage of this bike in action, check the video description for a couple of links. Uh, we've got one to our EMTB showdown that you can check out where we pitted this against some other electric mountain bikes. And then we've also got a trail ride we did up at Lori State Park with this and the events in Rambles where we took it on some highly technical EMTB terrain. So check those out. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Ride safe out there. Catch you in the next video.